We all ready to go? Yeah, get a little bit closer. Okay. okay. This down. I hope you ain't gonna ask me any silly stuff. No, I'm not gonna ask no. you any silly questions. Yes. Um, are we ready? Everybody uh, I've talked to tonight has said that you are sounding stronger than ever before. You're looking better than ever before, from Lonnie Liston Smith to our producer, Bruce Kaufman. And we want to know what do you um, attribute to that change, if you perceive it to be a change? I don't know. You know, just swimming every day, I think. Yeah. Swimming every day. Has your lifestyle tra changed drastically since you're. Are you your trying to get me to say that Sicily changed my whole life, right? She didn't. But she just softened the edges, you know. Because I used to be pretty, you know, wild. But she kind of did that to me. So, um, are you eating better, a vegetarian no, no, diet? No. I only eat fish and chicken, and I swim every day. That's probably what it is, you know. You are uh, credited with uh, beginning the jazz fusion movement, uh, beginning with your Bitches Brew album 15 years ago. How do you think that uh, form of music has evolved over the years? Well, everybody can, can understand what we're doing now, you know. The old jazz players are... They don't use what we use, synthesizers and stuff like that, you know. Keyboards, they still play the same thing, you know. But now they're coming around, I think. How do you think this form of music will, what do you think it will mean in the history of jazz, say, uh, 20 years from now, this jazz? Well, first place, they won't be calling it jazz. You should call it new music or another name. Because I associate jazz with nigger, you know, those Uncle Tom words that white people use. You know, when you, jazz, that's what it means to me. Because when you, when you go in the record store and you see people walk past the jazz thing, you know. You know, the, the corner where they have jazz, they walk right past it. So the fusion is, that's it nowadays for us to ad lib against it's a better background speaking of ad living and improvisation when you were playing the piece time after time out there could you describe to us the feeling you had when you were interpreting that sometimes i play it with uh you know how stanley jordan plays guitar with the rhythm and it Sometimes I play and put, put another rhythm when I play the melody. I also put a rhythm underneath the melody, but it's all with the trumpet. I it sounds different every time, I'm trying to say. Every time I play it, I play it different. Well, what do you feel? I mean, what's going through your mind? Mm, nothing, you know, you just... When I play something like that, I just f feel it, you know, I just, I just let it go through my body, you know, and that comes out like that. You know, I just divorce myself from the audience and just, if I play it the way I hear it, then they'll like it. But if I don't do that, they're not, they're not gonna like it, and I'm not gonna like it. So I let it, I let it take over my body, just like I would do. If I was kissing you. Thank you, I'm flattered. It's corny, but it's true. It's the same kind of feeling. I understand that years ago, that in order for you to get established as an artist, that you went to New York and sought out uh, the saxophonist, Bird. Charlie Palmer. Is that a true story? Yeah. I looked for him. I found him. And here you are today, and now... I went to Juilliard there, you know, and then I also looked for him. Because I learned more from uh, Thelonious Monk, Coleman Hawkins, and Bird than I did in school, you know, because I already knew what they were doing in school. You know, I just went to Juilliard to please my family, you know. My father, being a doctor, wanted me, you know, to be a 
have a degree in music. But it's, it's not like you don't have to have a degree nowadays. You know? They didn't have to have one then. I understand that a lot of artists like yourself who did seek out the bird for guidance and for that break. Um, Let me tell you something about bird. Bird didn't show me nothing. You know, but just being around him, you, you know, you, you, know it did, it did, you get it by osmosis, you know. You just, I mean, you'd be awful silly and dumb if you didn't get something, you know. You know, every night I used to listen to him. I understand that a lot of the younger artists of, of today are looking now to you to provide them with, with the same you mean, breaks. You like Lonnie? I used to teach Sir? Like Lonnie Liston. Yeah. <laughs> and so a lot of the other younger artists of, of today are looking to you to give, provide them with that break or looking to you to give them this experience so that they can pick up they their skills. My, they take my stuff and go someplace else. You know, like Herbie and Wayne and... Uh, you know, weather report. They go someplace else. You know, they do the same thing, but they do it their way. You know. Do you feel responsible for their uh, progress in that area, or their recognition in that area, since you were the inventor like of this? We were, not me. We were. Herbie's mother told me when I, Bebo, when I when I called up about his sister. You know, she said. Thanks for, for, you know, blah, 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 with Herbie, you know. I said, come on. I was, we all did that together. She was thanking me for Herbie's success. But we all did that together, you know. I understand that you're going to France. Or are you going to Europe? You're leaving this country. And um, there was published, a published report which uh, said that you were discouraged with America and the racism that you perceived here. Is that true? And if so... I just get tired of hearing English, and uh, when you ride the planes like I do, I get tired of hearing a white man talk about business and first class, and you know, talking about stocks and stuff. You know, no black people in first class. And I just sometimes I just get tired of it. So I might probably buy a house in the south of France. Are you planning to remain there for a while? Well, I'll stay there maybe two or three months out of a year. But I really can't stand white people sometimes. You know, they just get on my nerves. Just to hear them sound, just to hear their voice. I mean, it drives me nuts, you know. When I walk through the airport sometimes, I see them and I hear that same stuff I heard in St. Louis when I was a kid, you know. It make me sick. The majority of your audience tonight was white, and you seem to have not uh, I don't have felt. to listen to them. They listen to me. If I had to listen to them, you know, I wouldn't be here. But they listen to me. I'm giving them something, you know. Are you happy? Me? I'm only happy when I have a good rhythm section, and when I play well with them, it makes me feel not happy but good, you know. Would you uh, describe your performance tonight as one of those that gives you a good feeling? It was a cold, good concert. That's what it was. My sweat is cold. I had to wear gloves. I put the wrong pressure on the valves. My horn stuck. But it was still okay. They liked it. So. I've got one final question for you. If you had a legacy to leave to the younger jazz artists of today, what would it be? To leave, to leave who? To the younger jazz artists of today coming up who look up to you, what would your legacy be to them? I don't know. It's already there. It's in the tapes. I left it already. It's there. The records, the cassettes. When we started out, it wasn't... Maybe I had two records, 78 records, in, the, in 1940. But now they have so much to listen to, you know. They'll do the same thing that I did. Just hear my stuff and take it somewhere else, like Herbie and Wayne and all of them. Do you say that with any feelings of resentment, or are you proud that they are Oh yeah, the, Yeah. Oh, you mean like Herbie and well, you know, I could, I could see that they were going to do other things, you know. We used to talk to her a lot and show him different voices, chords, and uh, layers of orchestration. 
no plus with his brain, you know, his mind. <laughs> Take do something else. You know, he wouldn't do anything not good as as you know, not not he wouldn't be worse than he is he was when he left me. You know, because he knew I'd I'd say, Herb, but why you do that? What's wrong with you? You know what I mean? So we keep in contact with each other. Wayne Weather Report and Lonnie, Lonnie used to be with me. Lonnie Liston used to be with me too. Well, he says you sound young. What kind of statement is that? How you gonna sound young? He's your friend. If if I sound young, and I and I and I wanted to be great, I'd have to go listen to somebody younger than me to to do something. That's bullshit. I know you can't use that word, but I mean that's what it is. You know. Well, thank you very much. Thank you so much. It's a very good interview.